we'll continue our lessons from the Old Testament. We read from the book of Deuteronomy and chapter 4. Book of Deuteronomy and chapter 4 and verse 1. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take anything from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Ber Peor, for the Lord your God has destroyed from among you all the men who followed Baal of Peor. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding and the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has got so near to it, as the Lord our God is to us, whatever reason we may call upon him? And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to yourself, and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire, to the midst of heaven, with darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sounds of the words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, that is, the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone, and the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that you might observe them in the land which you cross over to possess. Amen. Now the people of Israel stand right in front of the land of promise which God had promised them, a land flowing milk and honey, uh, a land which is watered by heaven, or which the people of God will enjoy, where the people of God will enjoy not just the presence of God and the glory of God, but especially they will enjoy um, the blessings of God, the, the favor of God. There are a few hours away before they enter, and uh, God through Moses gives the last revelations and commandments to the people of God so that they won't make a mistake again. And the mistake that they did 40 years ago, it was that they disbelieved in the commandment of God when God told them, enter in the land and do not fear. But because they feared, they didn't go um, any further according to the will of God. As you see, brethren, fear uh, brings unbelief. And at the same time, unbelief brings fear. As a result, the man cannot um, go forward while he's led from the Holy Spirit 
he cannot enter into the land of promise where he will enjoy all the blessings in his personal life, in his family life, and his church life, and his spiritual life also. In every detail of our life, God has appointed blessings and a nice plan to which he calls us to walk in it, promising that I will be your defender. You do not fear, just believe in the word of God. Do not fear anything. For me to tell you or you to tell me do not fear it doesn't say much because uh, neither I nor you can you do something to defend me and help me. But when God tells to all of us and especially to each one of us, do not fear but just believe. I am your defender. I am your Lord. I am your God. I am your Savior. I am your Redeemer. And, and God to say so then the man cannot uh, um, bring any objection to that. Um, but the only thing he could do is to believe in the word of God. So I would say that it, there are a few moments before the people of Israel would enter into the land of promise without having any fear. And therefore God comes to speak in detail to the people of Israel so that they may enjoy completely the blessings of God. As you can see, dear brethren, even the word of God says that you should enjoy uh, fully your reward. That is the plan of God um, that he has for you. You should enjoy it much or not at all or complete. And that's what God wants. And this, th that is where God leads us. And for that reason, he directs our life in detail as he reveals to us um, with his word his own counsels, that is what he desires for you, uh, to, according to his own opinion, what commandment God gives to you, and last, what he pleases um, to do for you. So with this kind of mindset and, and the details, Moses speaks the word of God uh, to the people of Israel. Now, O Israel, listen attentively. What should you listen? You should listen to the statutes and the judgments which I teach you to observe and, and do. That is, my dear brethren, I repeat this again, that Christ is our teacher. And we want that. And it's something that he promises to us. Uh, by saying uh, to us, not call anyone um, teacher, but one is your teacher, is Christ. And do not name anyone else as your professor or, or your leader. One is your professor, and that is Christ. And we say amen to that, do we? So, we say amen to that. That is, we approach Christ, and indeed, we want to know what we uh, what we ought to do, we approach him as uh, disciples, since he says that you are, all of you are di my disciples, and we are directed to our teacher and our professor, so that he may speak to us, that he may explain to us, uh, direct us, and bless us. There are four things that God promises to us, which we want, and I personally want. And my family and all of us together uh, to take place into our lives. And Christ says that I will uh, give you wisdom. What does it mean that I will you give you wisdom and prudence? You will know what to do, when you will do it and how y you will do it. I will give you this wisdom. Because a man doesn't know what to do. No matter how well educated he is, no matter how uh, well informed, we know nothing. Do you know why? Because we do not know the future. We do not know what will happen the next day. And the only one who knows the future, the tomorrow and the day after, my tomorrow and your tomorrow, and all of us, it's Christ. So I will give you wisdom so that you may know what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. 
That's the first thing. The second thing is that I will teach you the way in which you should walk. This is an amazing thing, brethren. And you know, it is very important for us to say, Lord, I want you to be um, our te- we want you to be our teacher, our Lord and our God. This is something that we desire. Amen, brethren. We want this. And you know, God responds only to what you desire. If you say that I don't want this or this cannot happen, then then you have lost the Lord. But if um, in faith you tell Him that I want this, then He will uh, He will teach you. Um, the way in which you should walk. And we say, Amen, Lord. I want you to teach me that. The third thing is that I will advise you. I will counsel you. When you find yourself in weakness and anxiety, bewildered, e- even in fear and trouble, then at that moment you need someone to advise you, to counsel you. Someone to tell you, do not fear. For I'm here. You need someone who knows. You need someone who wants. And who is able. To help you. And Christ says that I will advise you. So I also want Christ to be my counselor. I want him a teacher and professor and a counselor. I don't want to get advices. Uh, We always want to to get advices and law um, cases which are the best uh, and uh, medical cases from the best doctor in any kind of case that troubles us we want to get the best advice why so that we may may get the right um, the right opinion because if it's not the right one what that man will tell us and we'll do it it will bring this it will bring destruction and Christ comes and he says that I'm I'm at your available um, to advise you at all times. I will advise you. And we answer to that Amen, Lord. But this Amen doesn't have only the meaning of faith and of acceptance, but also of the understanding that when I'm bewildered, then I will go to him to advise me. The fourth thing is that I will protect you from dangers, from every evil, from the devil and Satan who aims against your life, your future, who wants your destruction, even your death, since he's a man killer from the beginning. So God does four things uh, and he promises them to us. First of all, I will um, advise you, I will teach you the way in which you should walk. I will advise you and I will protect you. And this is something that the Lord of hosts and King of Kings says. And this is not um, the dead Christ or the small image or statue that says. But this is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings who says that. The resurrected and living God. Do you understand who says this? It's the living Christ who is alive. And he will live in eternity. And he's ready when you approach him uh, to listen to you. So this God says that now I will teach you judgments and statutes. That is my righteousness and my commandments. So that you, by submitting yourselves to my word, to leave. What does it mean to leave? You, you shouldn't die. And death is either uh, physical, the, the separation of the soul from the body of man. It's not a good thing, as the Word of God says, um, to live this life uh, at, um, half days, half our days. He says that uh, He wants to give us life, and this life abundantly. If you want to live, and even more, not to have a spiritual death, which is the separation of God from man and the eternal perdition, if you want to leave, then hear me at, hear my commandments attentively, which we will slowly, slowly start reading them. 
listen to my statutes and commandments so that you may live. First of all, in order to enter to the land of promise, first of all, you cannot guarantee your life for tomorrow unless Christ um, supports you. There are so many accidents that happen all around. And all of us have experiences how God has protected us. Whoever um, has been protected by God, may he raise up his hand. God has protected us repeatedly, not just once and twice, but many times. And we thank God for that. So the fact that we are alive, it's the grace of God. And it's by the mercy of God. And the fact that we have entered to the land of promise, into the church of Christ, and this is also grace by God. None of us has come here by himself, and we all know that. This is written. That daily Christ added those who have been saved by the Father into the church. This is the work of God. God the Father cries out that I have loved you with an eternal love. I have approached you with mercy. I've, I drew you close to me with mercy. And because you believed um, in Jesus Christ, as it says that whoever calls upon the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. The name of the Lord will be saved. And since you believed that God raised up uh, Jesus Christ and he stands on the right hand of God. For that reason, God has re-erected you. He has um, regenerated you. Because till some point we were born by the flesh and we were carnal people. But when God regenerates us by the Holy Spirit, then we become spiritual men. What is it men a carnal and a spiritual? A carnal man sp uh, works according to his um, mind. The spiritual man lives according to his um, spirit. So those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And God wants us and guarantees to us that we may live and enter. He guarantees to us that we may inherit. And who is a heir? He's the one who is a child of God. He's heir and heir together with Jesus Christ. And in here, when first Christ added us, what did he make us? He made us to be sons of God, heirs um, of God, heirs together with Jesus Christ. So our inheritance is eternal life. Our name has been written down in the book of life. So he guarantees to us that we may listen, submit and believe in the word of God. He guarantees to us, first of all, that we may leave. The second thing is that we may enter and to the church of Christ, uh, to, into the um, inheritance of God. And the third thing is that we may inherit the promises, the blessings of God. Do you understand, brethren, what is happening into our lives? We are heirs. To what kind of inheritance? Is the one that God the Father gives to us in the name of Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. Can we say, Alleluia, brethren? This is... Grace by God, what can we say about it? We can only give praise to God because the things that we read, it's not that we just read them, we have experienced them into our lives. And the second thing is that we have uh, experienced them into our lives. Why? Because we believed in them. And by believing in them, we asked for them. And if we want this to continue in our lives, we should continue asking um, uh, of it. But now the commandments start. And the first um, essential commandment so that we may leave, so that we may enter and inherit the kingdom of, of heaven. It's watch out lest you add anything to the word of God that I have given you, neither take away, so that you may be able by submitting yourself to the commandment of God to do everything that he commands you today. So the first commandment is that you may fear God and his word, not with a fear and trembling lest he strike upon you a lightning bolt, because God is love. But what matters is that, that you may keep the word of God without um, 
adding in or taking out so that you may be able to do it because otherwise you get confused and if I who here who am here and preach something and add something to the word of God then I will lead you to transgression someone says that enter the church we ought to cry out didn't Christ cry out but he cried out and the desert up on the mountains when he was with a and he adds that he is also um, deserted he is uh, here is also desert but don't you see the people of God here so whoever comes and tells you weird things you shouldn't accept them leave me alone what are you telling me he's a liar than the thief who doesn't get into um, in from the door but from the window and that is he adds and he takes out from the word of God when we add and take out from the word of God then we transgress the first mountain as a result we cannot do the word of God we cannot walk in the word of God we cannot be led by the Holy Spirit we should be led unto the whole truth so the first and essential thing is that you will not add and you're not, you will not take out from the word of God so that you may be able to do the commandments of the Lord which he commands. If brethren ever will I tell you my own things if ever I will uh, get deceived uh, get, grow old and say weird things that do not listen to me. You should only listen to Christ. Only Christ speaks the truth through his gospel. We shouldn't believe any other people. All of them are liars. Do you know why? And it's not because I'm telling this, but because the gospel says that every man is a liar. Only God is true. May God help us. Now listen to the second commandment. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor. For the Lord your God has destroyed from among you the men who followed the Baal of Peor. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. So the second commandment is, watch out, where are you going? What are you doing? I would like to remind you that there was Balak, um, the king of the Midianites. And when he saw the people of Israel, he was afraid and he tried to find the true prophet of God to tell him, come that you may curse the people so that I may destroy them and overcome them. Because whomever you curse, he'll be cursed. This is the inheritance of the uh, servant of God. Whomever blesses him is blessed. Whomever is curses him is cursed. So Balaam said that I'm a prophet, I will go to God and we'll see what I'll do. But he was indeed a true prophet of God. And God told him that God cannot say things different from his word. How will you curse a people whom I bless? Balaam, though his heart had been deceived and he desired glory and to be great and important. As I told you before, someone came and he told me that I'm an apostle of Albania. I told him, have you ever been there? No, I've never been there. What a nice apostle. And then the, your mind gets, do you know how many have come to me and they've told me that I'm an apostle? There is one thing that they, that they told me, that uh, God has given me um, a, a ministry of an evangelist. God have given, has given me the ministry of a teacher. God has given me a ministry of a prophet. I told him, stop, don't say um, that he has given you also the, of the pastor. And he said, no, no, no. He has given you the ministry uh, of a pastor to you. May God help us. I can't tell you how many things I've heard. But why am I saying that? I'm saying that so that we may continue in the Word of God. And sometimes our heart gets puffed up and, and we don't understand that. And then we start and prophesy and we prophesy loudly and we cry out 
and we judge and condemn why it's because it's not the Holy Spirit who speaks and uh, this brother has has lost his path and this can happen to all of us we get puffed up and then God comes and tells me humble yourself so that you may find grace before God and how do we humble ourselves be clothed humility by being submitted um, um, the the man who does not submit himself is completely proud God um, either with good or bad he wants to do his own thing he is um, insubordinate this man is proud as a result God resists on him may God help us our dear brethren because Balaam loved money he loved glory and he he was puffed up and of course he ceased to be a prophet who who was indeed a prophet and he became a magician he became a mediator and when he saw that um, he couldn't do anything against the people of Israel then he advised Balak to take the most beautiful Moabites to send them to the young men of the people of Israel to deceive them and allure them and approach them and the Bible says that and the people Israel and the blessed people of Israel the Moabites called um, the people of Israel to the to the services to their gods and to the sacrifices and the people of Israel ate from that sacrifices and then their hearts the heart of the young men of the people of Israel approached to Baal Peor this this false god and then the judgment of God came and death and trouble and now he comes to remind them what happened there in the land of Moab when the people of Israel when the young man attached themselves to the Moabites and God indeed destroyed, the, destroyed this people but as many and this is a secret brethren um, that we should those who continued um, attached and close to the word of God you're still alive and you're the ones who will enter and who will be blessed May God help us that we may continue to be um, uh, attached to the word of God, brethren. Because the devil uses many things, many ways. He, he provokes, he makes invitations, he accuses, he uses a carnal mindset many ways and because he wants both to destroy the people of God the man of God and all around them but you made the decision and continued attached in the Lord and the gospel and in the word of God uh, you are still alive and you will be blessed now as we continue we get into um, more details which in verse 5 surely I your teacher have taught you statutes and judgments not as I think it's better says Moses just as the Lord my God commanded me that is I do not say my own things as a teaching but what God told me to tell you I speak to you and that's how I teach you I'm teaching you the Word of God. So I have taught you statutes and judgments, and not as I think, but exactly as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you should do exactly, so that you should enter into the land which you were called. Now you have come into the church, you have come into the inheritance, you ought to do exactly you ought to walk exactly in the word of God not as fools but as wise so that you may enjoy all the inheritance that God gives you and all the blessings of God 
as he continues, he speaks even more specifically, and he, he says, so keep this and do them because this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all the statu all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So the man who hears attentively the to the word of God who keeps into his heart the word of God and walks, being submitted completely to the word of God, then God exalts him. And the first thing that he commands is that, behold, a wise and prudent man who doesn't make mistakes, who doesn't make act, act foolishly, he doesn't have failures in his life. Why? Because God is with him. Whatever he does, God prospers it. Why? Because he enjoys the favor of God. And what do people think? They think that they know everything. But we know that if God wasn't with us, then we would have done everything wrong into our lives. And while God is with us, when we submit to him and obey, then everything will be blessed into our lives. So the first uh, requirement the first ad advice that God gives to us, because why did we come here today? We didn't come to see one each other, neither to take nor receive anything. We came to hear the word of God. We came to watch um, attentively, to hear attentively the word of God, uh, what Christ has to tell us, not not to, to hear a man. So it is very important that we may hear. Did we come to hear? Then we should hear attentively. Did we hear? Then we should um, receive them and accept them and keep them into our heart. We shouldn't say, I've heard these things again and that's it. No, we hear them and we keep them into our heart. We remember them so that as we come out from this place to walk exactly according to the things that we've heard, according to the things that we read, we study, which is the word of God. The first serious um, thing that God does is that he exalts and he, he exalts uh, he exalts his man so that his wisdom and prudence may be evident uh, to that man. Uh, that's a special man. It's a special people who doesn't curse, it doesn't smoke, it doesn't act foolishly, he doesn't um, act according to his uh, own mind. This is the people of God. The favor of God is evident in his life. Whatever he does, God prospers it. Wherever he goes, God is with him. Whatever he says, God is that teaches him. And whatever he does, God's, uh, God goes before him. Do you want to be wise and prudent in here and out in the world so that where God will command you for your wisdom and prudence? Watch out to hear attentively to the word of God. And when you hear this word of God, you should work it into your heart by the Holy Spirit so that you may keep it. You shouldn't reject it and forget it. Do not say that I come in and out. If you just come in and out without anything happening, then... It's no, there's no use. Why didn't you stay at home? Why didn't you uh, go and stream? What we want is to hear the word of God, to work it into our hearts, so that when we walk in our path, to walk exactly in the word of God. You know, uh, there there isn't a man who is lacking, but there is a man who is blessed. There isn't lack or uh, someone that is unlucky. People who don't know what they're saying. There are people who are favored and people who are not favored. And this favor depends on one thing. That you may listen attentively to the word of God. Or that you may study attentively the word of God. Since it is written, studying these things, continuing these things. And your progress will be evident to all people. This is a wise and prudent man. 
successful before God and man, both in spiritual things and in his personal life. Why? Because he doesn't want to do the things that, are, um, that he thinks are right. He doesn't present himself as a, a great and important person, but he knows that we are all less than zero. No man is worthy of a word. Otherwise, I will show off myself and God will go away from me. But if I show Christ and I become less, then God will be glorified. Amen, brethren. The next thing is that in verse 7, for what great nation is there that God, that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason, we may call upon him. Now, who is greater? Who is greater? People want to be great and important. But what matters, it's not what you think is uh, what your opinion so that you may be great or someone else. And so he who commands himself is unapproved, but approved is the one whom God commands. I wouldn't speak, I wouldn't, I will not speak um, out what I am, but the Lord will speak not to me, but to the others what I am. Because I might imagine many things for myself, but that's not what matters, but is what God reveals about me and about you. So what great nation is there and how is the greatness of a man of a person and of a nation is evident to whom God is so near to him do you hear who is great is him to whom God is so near so that to whatever God to so for whatever reason he may call upon him, God is with him. Great man is not the one who, who is proud and he speaks about himself. He's not a great person. He's a Pharisee and a hypocrite. He's a wretched person, a liar and a deceived person. At the best case. But great man is the one whom God commands. And God commands the one who is near to God. And for that reason, the word of God says, approach to God and God will approach to you. Great is the one who is near to God and to whom God is near in all the things that he calls upon him. Help us, O God. As you see, my dear brethren, the Word of God is not um, just to describe things to us, but whatever He describes, He does them. Who is the one who does them? It's God. People say, read, study, and if you um, write, um, give the right answers, then you will pass the exam. But God says, read, study, and if you submit yourself to my word, then I will be with you. Not just in your exams. Do you understand what a man says? You will pass the exams with the best mark in these exams, but, uh, but what about the others? I have 10 um, um, lessons to, to take an exam. What, what about the other nine? God doesn't say so, but he says, study, do what you're studying, and it will be with you all the days of your lives, till the end of the age. There's a big difference from the promises of God um, than the demands of the people. And I repeat this. There's a big difference between the promises of God and the demands of man. For that reason, when we raise up our children, we shouldn't raise them uh, um, by commanding from them 
Of course, you have to study, especially when they are in, in their teenage years. They have to study, but nothing successful can happen by demanding. The law doesn't bring um, results, good results. We will raise up our children, yes, by um, demanding from them, but uh, with the grace of Christ and the mercy of God, with prayer, with the word of God, and with the power of the Holy Spirit. So, so who is that great? He is the one who has learned to approach God so that may God may be near to him and so that he may be so that he may show himself powerful to all the things that the man calls upon him. So if you approach God, God is by your side. Do you know what people do? in order to understand that better. People approach um, rich people, politicians, and they flatter them, and they approach those. They approach these people whom people think that they have power to help them, to the things that they will ask of them. And then the th uh, what happens is that they get disappointed. But we approach the Almighty, who is the perfect power, the perfect love. We approach Him on His word. He's near to us, and whatever we ask of Him, He gives it to us because He has promised to ask, and He ask, and you, you shall receive. But how do you ask? Now, Din, my son Dennis is in Australia. I will tell him, uh, Dinner, help him. He can listen to me. I will approach him so that he may listen to me. And this is the greatness of God, and this is the glory of God which he reveals to men. But there is also another characteristic. And what nation is that great uh, that has such statutes and righteous judgments? as are in all this law which I said before you this day. And it's not that God uh, is pleased and he approaches us with favor, but the law that he gives us is righteous and he makes us righteous. You're not a, a fraud. He doesn't say, um, grab so that you may have and and still so that you may have to eat. He does not lead us to uh, transgressions, but the word of God lead us, leads us to righteousness. And what greatest righteousness there is than the word of God that a man should follow. May God help us. My dear brethren, let us seek the righteousness of God. And the righteousness of God comes through the word of God. And the result um, of it will be that this, uh, his people will be great and his God will be great. Amen.